Oh, ja. Ja. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, um, I would also like to take the opportunity to thank the organizers um, for organizing this workshop, uh, which is very diverse and interesting, and also for the um, opportunity to take part in it. Um, and uh, I would like to talk about the replica symmetric phase of random constraint satisfaction problems, um, which is joint work with my uh, with um, Amin Kuya Oglan and Tobias Kapitanopoulos, also both from Frankfurt. And because this article is rather long and time is short, I would like to give a very high level overview, um, beginning with an example that illustrates one side of this um, article. Um, which is the planted coloring model. Afterwards, I would like to take the other side of the, uh, like to take the other point of view, which is basically from random constraint satisfaction problems and present a very small um, um, sample of the results. So uh, let me begin with planted coloring, um, which uh, is generated in, um, two steps. So in the first step, uh, you have given a vertex set of n vertices and you have q colors. And for each vertex independently, you draw a uniform color from the set of all possible colors. So in this example, <laughs> in this very sketchy example that you see here, we have three colors and the partition could roughly look like this. Then in the next step, you generate some um, edges between vertices of different colors. So for each vertices, which have been assigned different colors in the previous step, you um, include an edge into the edge set with probability d over n, and it does not depend on the particular colors that you consider. Um, so in this, uh, this way, you generate a graph, and in the next step, somebody takes away the colors. And you're just given the graph, and uh, the problem is to draw conclusions about this planted coloring um, from the first step just by looking at this graph. Now, um, in this inference problem, of course, there can be um, various uh, particular questions that you could look at, and the particular questions that I would like to focus on for now is first the very easy, uh, not easy, but I mean the most basic question to. Um, tell whether the graph you're given has been generated by this particular procedure that I um, described just now, or whether it was generated as a binomial random graph um, or erdos rheny random graph in which the edge probability has the same expected degree as in the planted coloring model. So this would be the first question. Can you tell this uh, planted model apart from some null model. And the next question would be a bit harder. Um, so can you infer something of this coloring? So does there exist a polynomial time algorithm such that this algorithm outputs a coloring of the graph um, that uh, does better than the random guess that we already heard about today um, with high probability? So, um, this, of course, um, is a, um, depends on the, number, on the information that we have for each vertex, which is measured in the number of its neighbors or in its particular neighbors. So it's natural to parameterize this problem by the average number of neighbors of each vertex in this graph. And in the analysis of this problem, it has been turned out to be very useful to have some idea of how this planted coloring sits in, in the total number of solutions or colorings of your given graph. So this is an, uh, an adaptation of uh, a picture in an article by Krachakala and Deborova. And so for a small average degree, there are of course many solutions or colorings and um, they are well connected. You can go from one to the other by just changing a small number of um, colors. And then if you, as you increase the degree, first this um, 
the number of coloring shatters into an exponential number of um, clusters. And in one of these, you can see your planted coloring. Afterwards, um, after this uh, second threshold, you see um, that, or maybe you don't see it in the picture, but the idea is that um, this uh, cluster in which the planted coloring sits um, contains more colorings than all the other clusters together. And at some other threshold, you just see like the last non, um, the last cluster not associated to the planted coloring vanishes. So by looking at this picture, maybe how, how can, can you see how you, how, uh, how well you can guess this uh, planted coloring. And um, just looking at our two questions that I've mentioned um, two slides ago, uh, there are two thresholds which have been predicted in the article by Tese, Kirchaka, Lamour and Steborova. So um, they conjectured that um, there is this condensation threshold um, below which, uh, above which, um, it is information theoretically possible to discern the planted model from the null model. Um, on the other side, there's this uh, second threshold, the kesten stiegum threshold, um, which in our case is Q minus one squared, uh, above which it is um, in fact um, efficiently possible to find um, an approximation of your, of your planted coloring. And in between, the problem is conjectured to be hard. So um, there has been some previous work on this um, by Noga Alon and Nabil Kahale from the 90s. And they um, give a deterministic spectral algorithm with expected polynomial running time that finds a coloring correlated um, to the ground truth with high probability if this average uh, degree exceeds some large absolute constant, which is larger than Q minus one squared, the kesten stiegum bound. And this algorithm roughly proceeds in three steps. Um, so first you, are do, you do some clustering based on spectral methods and the adjacency matrix of a slightly modified graph. The next step, you um, perform some local improvement. Afterwards, you uncolor some vertices and then you color these again by doing some um, exhaustive search, say, that is compatible to the rest of the coloring. Um, so this is some rigorous result from the 90s, which uh, that's the important point, it, it finds a coloring. It's not just some assignment of colors to the vertices, but it's actually a proper coloring. Okay, and uh, our result in this would be that we um, exactly um, verify the prediction on the location of the condensation short as an optimization problem. Um, it was known before only for a large number of colors or asymptotically. And then we also identify this condensation threshold as the threshold below which it is not information theoretically possible to discern the planted model and the null model um, because below um, the graph is contiguous to the erdos schrading model. Okay, so let me now in the second half of the talk come to the other side where there's no planting, but you maybe first generate the graph and then look for colorings. So um, in the general random constraint satisfaction problem, you have some variables which are bound by constraints. Um, in our case, the constraints are generated as in the erdos rheny model. And uh, you can picture this by the usual factor graph, where your constraints are the um, square uh, nodes and the variables are the round circle nodes. And each constraint binds exactly the same number of variables in our case. And then you assume that you have a Poisson number of constraints for simplicity such that on average, each um, variable participates in D constraints. Okay, and now also for this problem, the question would be how the solution space evolves when the density parameter D increases. Um, and here it's, um, maybe I don't need to explain this to you, but um, here we can introduce a Boltzmann distribution um, which is in our case, if the 
if we look at random constraint satisfaction problems, it just counts the number of solutions. So for each constraint, it forbids some value configurations of the adjacent variables, and um, we forbid some of these. And if we combine all the constraints, we can count the number of solutions to these constraints and normalize them to get a um, probability distribution. And then we look at the um, evolution of the space of solutions as the average number of um, clauses in which each variable participates increases. And here's again an adaptation of um, conjecture by Krachakala, Montanari, Richard Hazengi, Semergian, and Stebora. I'm sorry. Um, so um, as you can see, maybe the picture looks quite similar up to the condensation threshold to the picture that I showed you before. Um, but afterwards, maybe there, um, there um, are more clusters. And suddenly then after the satisfiability threshold, you have no solutions anymore. Um, and so um, one result um, is the identification of this condensation threshold, um, after which the number of um, clusters is sub-exponential and the mass is carried of the Boltzmann distribution is by, ca carried by, a sub, um, by sub exponentially many clusters. And so this uh, functional B is a compact version of the beta free, ener beta free entropy. And uh, from this functional, we can read off uh, the condensation threshold. And then the theorem states that the condensation threshold is strictly positive and not um, infinite. And um, before condensation, you can explicitly determine the exponential growth factor of the partition function. And roughly, if you had no constraints, um, this would be the number of solutions would be Q to the N. For each vertex, you have Q spins. And then this Xi factor is the average impact of a constraint. So for each constraint, you get a penalty factor. And this, in fact, marks a phase transition because um, the partition function behaves differently after condensation, uh, which is the second result. So there is a with probability one minus e to the minus omega of n. It's uh, strictly smaller. And the main result of the paper is maybe interesting because it has, uh, to my knowledge, no um, physics. Uh, prediction match um, is that the, um, the uh, determination of this normalization of the partition function and it converges in distribution to this random variable here, um, which uh, comes out of some um, subgraph conditioning technique. So these are the two main results. And this is the third uh, part in a series of articles. So um, the previous two articles um, dealt with um, problems with soft constraints. Um, and this is the main, um, the main uh, difference to our result that we deal with hard constraints, which is combinatorially considerably harder because uh, much of the proofs um, is based on based on um, adding the impact tracing of adding an edge or removing an edge, and this can have a significant impact if you um, can destroy lots of solutions by adding a hard constraint. Okay, and uh, to end the um, talk, let me return to the beginning by to the planted coloring problem. So two open questions in this setting would be, first, does a variant of the alohan kahale algorithm work maybe down to um, the keston stigum bound or maybe even down to condensation? And um, a second question would be, it's, um, it's con um, conjectured for three colors that um, the reconstruction, condensation, and keston stigum coincide. And this is also an open problem. And um, finally, I would like to advertise uh, a workshop, which is also held online, 
um, which is inference problems, algorithms, and lower bounds from the 31st of August to the 4th of September. And if you would like to register, you should uh, send an email to this email address. So, um, attention. Thank you, Noah. Uh, we'll move to